This video is all about Venom Fang the Dragon and Thunder Tree. Now at the start of this whole series, I told you not to include Thunder Tree in your Lost Minds campaign. But here I am, about to tell you how to include Thunder Tree in your Lost Minds campaign. What's going on, old hypocrite Perkins? Well, first, let me just make one last appeal as to why I think you should skip this part of the campaign. But then after that, if you still want to run Thunder Tree, I'll show you how I would do it. Part one, what's the deal with Thunder Tree? Some of these musings on Thunder Tree is stuff that I hashed out with my friend Fred from How to D and D. You can check out our video that we made together up here. The shtick of this side quest is that 30 years ago, a volcano decimates this town called Thunder Tree, and then a bit after that, some zombies and twig blights sweep through the area and overrun the town. Long abandoned, an old wizard's tower in town becomes this lair for giant spiders, and they, in turn, are evicted by a young green dragon named Venom Thing. Cut to the present day, and a party of cultists is skulking around the outskirts of town, preparing to pay tribute to Venom. Fang. And all of this is happening under the watchful eye of Rito, a local druid who wants Venom Fang to leave. So that's all the players in this story. But let me expand on those ideas a little bit. Part 2. Four Reasons to Cut Thunder Tree So here are my four reasons why I think you're better off without Thunder Tree. Number one. This quest is designed to kill players. In a Steel Man observation of Thunder Tree, where the party is the max level for this campaign, level five, then this encounter with the dragon alone, with nothing else, is already lethal. Without even accounting for the strategic advantage of the dragon's flight, if the party gets caught in its breath weapon and all fail their saves, it would drop the pre-made party altogether. It would drop the rogue, it would drop the wizard, it would leave both the fighters on two hit points, and only the cleric would be safe with their dwarven resistance to poison damage. This is not a fair fight, and I think it's designed to body players. I don't think I could be convinced otherwise. I'm not a fan of the fight you're meant to lose kind of trope, like the JRPG trope. I just want to point out that on a core level, this quest's core purpose is adversarial, and that kind of runs counter to my D&D style. Point two is that the starter set doesn't really have any room for more villains. In our starter set guide, which this video forms a part of, uh, we're already tweaking all of the villains, so every faction clearly points towards our climax with the black spider in the Wave Echo Cave. But Thunder Tree adds Venom Fang, it adds the Cultists, it adds Redoth the Druid, each of these entirely separate characters and factions, each with their own motivations, unrelated to the campaign's broader plot of taking Gundren, rescuing him, uh, and then finding the way back to the cave. We could work to incorporate these factions, but then we're injecting a lot of bloat into our story's already full ecosystem. Point three is that Venom Fang naturally overshadows every other villain. And not just by challenge rating, I'm talking about dramatic scale. Venom Fang is a more impressive villain than the Black Spider is. We spend all this effort carefully finessing Nazar and the party into opposite corners of our campaign's boxing ring, making sure that they function as foils for each other, but in any fantasy setting, there's nothing that can match the raw visual spectacle of a dragon. And that's the problem. If Venom Fang exists in a low-level campaign, then Venom Fang must be the main villain. And that's an entirely different story. Point four, read off the druid is a silver bullet. In the book, if the party go and ask the druid how to get to Wave Echo Cave, which is information normally gated behind the party rescuing Gundren, then the druid offers to show the players the cave's location if they can chase off Venom Fang. Now this is a lose-lose situation for the players, because the outcomes are, outcome A, the party loses the fight against Venom Fang, which is the kind of loss that I would be salty about as a player. Or option B, the party succeeds in chasing off Venom Fang, and now Rudolf, Rudolf, Rudolf? He guts half the campaign and circumvents a lot of the satisfying drama, like rescuing our friend Gundren. Now sorry about that, that was a lot of complaining from me. But there are good things about Thunder Tree too. For one, there's some really cool loot in the area, and then there's the main draw, Venom Fang the Dragon, because dragons are rad, especially for the Dungeon Master. Running a dragon encounter is super fun. I mean, look at this big flappy boy breathing that breathy breath, woof. I love it. With those four expertly reasoned reasons, I'm sure I've already convinced everybody to not run Thunder Tree. Everybody's 100% convinced that they need to tear those pages out of the book and just put them in a big bin. And there couldn't possibly be any kind of dissenting opinions out there, right? Nah, I'm joking. Oh, oh hey buddy. Hey, everybody, this is Raw, the engagement beholder. He survives off all those yummy likes and comments and shares and subscriptions. Hey, buddy, you get any good engagement lately? Oh, what's that? You haven't? Oh, and you're starving? Oh, I don't know what you expect this very supportive audience of friends to do. Jeez, this guy's so needy. Sorry about him, everybody. But if I were to ignore all of those reasons for cutting Thunder Tree, and I wanted to include it in my game anyway, well, it would be a complete campaign overhaul. And not just a coat of paint, we're ripping out the engine and all other kinds of car metaphors. So here's how I would do it 
broad strokes. Part three, how to center the starter set around Thunder Tree. I suppose this video is less a guide for new dungeon masters about how to run this part of the adventure and more a guide for more experienced dungeon masters to rewrite the adventure to focus on this dragon. So we're not gonna go into a whole lot of depth, but we're gonna cover a really broad range of story beats. The first change would be that the black spider doesn't exist anymore. Every mention of Nezar, just cut her from your memory. If we have to have an evil dragon in the story, that evil dragon has to be our main villain. Second change would be Venom Fang is the villain. This means that we're gonna to need to work out ways to antagonize the players with this new villain early on, just like we did with the black spider. I think dragons can polymorph, right? So maybe you'll need to dream up a persona for Venom Fang's pedestrian mode. Third change would be the location of the Wave Echo Cave is not hidden. It's underneath Thunder Tree. So here's two facts. One, dragon sword treasure. And two, the greatest treasure in the whole Phandalin region has got to be the Wave Echo Cave and the Fortress of Spells. So let's say the Wave Echo Cave's location is known, but it's also known that it's guarded by a big dragon boy in Thunder Tree. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. A fourth change is that rather than having Gundren know the secret of the location of the Wave Echo Cave, like the regular book, we're going to say that his secret knowledge is the existence, the knowledge of the existence of the Forge's spells. Because if the Forge was common knowledge, then everybody would be fighting this dragon all the time. It would be an embattled dragon. So the Forge is generally kept a secret. A fifth point is that the puzzle box is still in play. Just like in the regular video series, how I was suggesting we have this guardian and this puzzle box, the dragon still needs this item to activate the Forge of Spells. A sixth point is that the red brands are now dragon cultists, because we need to point every faction at Thunder Tree. So the red brands are now the green brands, and they're doing green dragon cult stuff. I don't know what that's gonna look like, but I think it gives them a little bit more personality. A seventh point is gonna be to replace Silda, take that old knight and replace him with Read Off the Druid. This is my best idea, because a druid is way more relevant to the storyline than an old knight. Our eighth point is to get rid of the bandits of Wyvern Tor. They just don't exist. This faction is already hard enough to justify in the module as written, I'm not about to piggyback them into this rewrite. A ninth point is that Gundren still gets captured. I don't know if you need to rework the Cragmore Goblins too much, but this is a little bit of a blind spot for me. So we need to work out a reason for Gundren to get captured rather than straight out killed by these goblins. What, what if the goblins as a faction were, they're not working with the dragon, and instead they're trying to get its horde or into the Wave Echo Cave? I'm not too sure on this point, but hey, if you've got a good idea to fix the goblins for this change, then please let me know in the comments down below. Part four, final thoughts on Thunder Tree, Venom Fang, and the starter set. If you took these nine suggestions, these nine story beats, and you kind of rearranged them and fleshed them out and made them your own, I think overall, you might end up with a better campaign than The Lost Minds of Fandelver as it's written. Because the story of challenging a dragon is more interesting than the story of challenging a, a dark elf. It's a more evocative and interesting and scary proposition. Especially when you consider that the promise of this adventure, it has a dragon on the front of the box. Do I have a box anywhere? I don't, I don't have it with me, but I'll put it on the screen. The first thing that players see is like, oh, can we fight that? And if you can say the answer is yes, that there's some value there. I don't know, this is the starter set. Okay, this is for new dungeon masters to take their first foray into the game and asking new DMs to completely overhaul the adventure and add in all of these new things without the added support of a video guide. Hey, right here, your boy. Without the help of a video guide, I think that would be a lot to ask, even though I do think it would be a better adventure. Look, I'm in two minds about cutting Thunder Tree from this adventure because I think that the adventure of Thunder Tree, I think it is intrinsically better because there's a dragon, that's the default, but it doesn't really have a place in a starter set adventure. I suppose that's my final point. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, right now, after this video premieres, I am live on Twitch at Matthew Perkins DM, and I'm responding to your YouTube comments live. So please come follow. And all these people down here, thank you so much. These are my patrons. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support.